Pinot Black folks, and this is what you're seeing is a 3D animation of our magnetical, what's our coronal, and it's our own Earth, our electrical motor of Earth doing its spiral and its rotation, which creates our statical magnetical, which basically we probably won't ever lose it, even if we lost the sun. And let's look at the connections between the sun and what you already have when you've seen the coronal CME reactive flares that planets do when the sun's CME action, which is a coronal mass ejection from the sun, and the sun has also its fields that I've showed you in the past. Now this is how uh, basically weather actually becomes with how you get lightning, okay? And then you have to remember that satellites are cruising around Earth at over 300 miles high. Okay, so and they either have this in kilometers or mileage, but basically our uh, satellites are above the thermosphere. Okay, they have to be. Not all of them, but 99.9% .9 of them. Now what scientists are worried about is the idea that will the meatball cut our magnetical connections off to the sun? It is this possibility that through our history of earth that it probably has happened a few times the meatball is there as you can see it from certain videos so a lot of theorists because that's all a scientist is until he actually has a discovery that's rock solid okay so they don't want you to see certain stuff they want you to see this blank okay that's why they took this shot away okay but i'll share it with you okay this is earth this is venus this is the meatball. The sun is over here, way back behind this solar panel. And Jupiter is this line here. And as you see, there's other planets along with Jupiter. And that's not Jupiter. Okay. But Jupiter's probably about right there. And here we are, first off. So you can see that what we got is what we've got. And let's go ahead and pop in the meatball. There you go. Bam, right in on it. You've got the meatball, which you can't miss. And you're pretty much being able to see because you know that uh, that it can't put a uh, shadow over top of a shadow. So as you see, and then you can see the movement also of the two massive. So and actually probably the third as you're seeing up here. Okay, so it's up there, and so is your object that's beside, and basically, uh, Comet, uh, what is it, oh, there's a guy that's on YouTube, and he's basically, as you see, Uranus is at our back door, very close now, and we'll see what we get for earthquakes from that, and as you know, Jupiter's over here, now there's Jupiter, and more than likely, this is, uh, oh, this is Pleiades here, okay? That's Pleiades. That is Pleiades. And I got Jupiter behind the solar panel, and then the sun is even farther left behind collecting the solar energy. As you can see, Venus is huge because of what is coming off the supergiants and everything else. And you can't miss the meatballs right there. And all this light exposes this huge stuff that is back in the neighborhood of our back door in the deepest, darkest of space with Uranus and so forth. Okay? And that's us Earth right up there. And this is the 19th. We'll take it down to that so you know that where it's where we're at and it'll even pop out. Okay? And what's wild is there even looks like there's even huge stuff down here. Now there is a planet that is 749 times the size of the sun, okay? So that's not even it. Basically that would take up this whole shot more than likely, even if you could see it from a long distance out. Now more than likely this is 6 trillion miles in diameter, okay, the meatball. And then we're also going to go take a look at, uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can take a look at a fresh shot of what's up by the sun.
which is not this heat ball that's in front of the sun, which more than likely is deflect deflecting all the... Now currently too, folks, when we zoom out, we got to look at the, what we see here and here. We have two other huge things that are comparable to Pleiades that's over here, okay? And we'll just zoom in real fast again. And we're at the meatball, Venus, Uranus, and Earth, and then we'll zoom up. Because we're getting great shots from Soho right now. And then you get to see this huge, and this here. And then i got to show you a picture that I got last night. Isn't this wild? Basically, this is probably what they freak out and think that it's a uh, black hole. And as you can see, it's not a black hole. It's a supernova, more than likely. And more than likely, that is electrical energy coming off stars and going to each other, okay? And they're feeding off one another. And that's what they're starting to freak out about, possibly the sun, because that's what it's probably doing with... Then we have this object here, and I'm going to give you a, a zoom in on this in a second on a picture. And basically, we'll zoom down here so that you know that we're at Venus, and there's basically the meatball. And actually, you can see it a little bit better that you know that there is something that's there that's blocking out a bunch of stars. All right, there's the meatball, and the actual that that is not a when you blow up, you can see that that is not. And this other one up here, you can see that that's not a shadow of Venus. Okay, and neither is the meatball, as there is the meatball on the side of it. Okay, and this is blocking CMEs from the sun. It actually protects Earth right now. If we were to get a huge, which we did have some X and some M, and that'll probably be in the next video. So just so you know that this is where we're at on these shots, which are beautiful right now, because basically they're wanting to have a good look. And this is the meatball from the 13th, not the, not the 9th, all right? Or the other date so we can zoom in on it pretty good and then you know that that's not a shadow of venus or the sun okay there's earth there's venus and this is from the 13th this is the ie the 13th i just got it more centered on that one so you can zoom in better and as you see there you can actually zoom in pretty good on this one too you know that's not a shadow of anything it's actually the meatball okay this is how bad our electrical static does get, okay? That's how bad we have been, as you see the red over here. So, and we're probably gonna get some more. Now here's a zoom in of our object in Hawaii, okay? Out of, this, out of the nighttime sky, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and zoom in on, this is the same thing that's up by the sun that you see at Nehemiah Station. And here's our manned fighter. This is the badass fighter, folks, okay? Manned, that's not radio controlled, and that's not a bomber. Okay, well, it actually could drop a bomb. We got some good stuff. Yeah, we need to control Japanese TV because that's who took this shot, folks. Okay, not no spies, Japanese TV. Impersonating me, I am going to sue the crap out of you. I don't care who this person is or what kind of... All my stuff is protected, okay? You're in trouble, okay? You cloned my video. Pino is all actual factual. So if you ever think I'm psyoping you, let me know. Because I'm not. Never will. Don't need to. Got too much. I've always been glad that we can't put a bomb in an SR-71 Blackbird. Actually, I'm lying to you folks. Sometimes I have to lie to you to be sublime. Very proud of it. And this is what I got off Alaska last night. We got a real good shot of this. And I actually should be able to get this in the next shot too. And there you go. That's what we basically zoom in on here. And we're going to zoom in on here, and I call it like the 12, and maybe you might even be able to see 13, and it's a very astounding, and this is always there on the right-hand side of the sun, and we're going to be able to get in real good, and that's what's up right-hand side of the sun all the time, folks. Very amazing. Those are planets and or stars, and if they are two planets on the end of each other, they have an electrical connection to each other all the time. And no, folks, those are not no satellites, okay? Those are huge planets who have a very good telephone line, and they're not, they're not buried underground, so that means that they are susceptible to being attacked, i.e. Earth at any time. So it's maybe just a couple planets that are doing the same thing that, that the suns are doing and Earth, because they're all electrically, magnetically connected. But no matter what, that's there, okay? And I'll zoom out, and you should be able to see the sun down here in the left-hand side. That's a, some of the CME actions coming off the sun. This is actually up there, okay? It's very amazing. I've been watching it for a long time. 
how much it's in line. And I really do believe that this is a stairway, not to heaven, no. It's an electrical connection that they have between these two planets. And I know how to travel through space, ladies and gentlemen. I've got it down. I'm worth a lot more than I was five minutes ago. And it's up there, folks, and it's hiding in the sun. And actually, NASA doesn't even figure this out. But I've got it figured out, folks. It's electrical. And I do not believe that there is any... This is just actually a phenomenon of nature in space. And basically, it's helped me figure something out. I have a great invention. The most important thing is nobody touches me. Electrical energy is very deadly. And yes, these two planets are electrically connected massively. Super Space Highway. I've got a great invention. And we can move an ICBM very fast and safe. Somewhat dangerous, but we own the skies. So, supersonic, fast-moving ICBMs with a pilot. And yes, folks, the powers to be always have stuff way before because basically that was testing a little model Harrier way back when they used to drive these kind of vehicles, folks. And I'll zoom in on those. You know, you can see that's a little Harrier. And basically, this is them doing the test bed before they put it in flight. And yes, that long ago, ladies and gentlemen, that long ago, okay? Those are some old vehicles, folks. That's what the scientists were driving, okay? There is stuff 50 years ahead of what we know of now. What's great is we never throw any of these away. There might be some mothball in a museum somewhere, but it's just the idea because they're out of date. And this thing is up there, okay? It's up by the sun, okay? So we're going to go look at a shot from a recent helio viewer. Man, this stuff's all American, folks, so relax. We got everything under control. I only show you the truth, folks. So this is just to show you, folks, that that there could be our meat, one of our meatballs, but either that or a relative of it. And it's always up there. And then we'll get to a live or more fresher shot of it basically up by the sun. And as you can see it there. Just to keep it in there and there, as you can see, okay? It's not one of the remnants right by the sun. It's huge. You know how big the sun is. That thing is flipping huge. It's bigger than Jupiter. Okay. Now this might, might be one of the M's that came off. But actually it's been a while. So this is actually probably still some of the C action that came off. So. And you can see we're getting more electrical pulse from way the hell out. And that's why I'm showing you a very far off shot. And basically you can see it coming down. See how that's coming through from way out in space. So basically, that's just electrical energy from other suns that are 10 times and way larger, like up to 78 times to, 100, to 380 times size the sun, way the hell out in space. As you can, so you're starting to imagine how much the meatball, and you scroll back through the video, is our friend because all this stuff is just massively being deflected from us, Earth. We have a nice hole in space that we are hiding out. Okay? So... I was hoping to get some of that massive energy from way out in space to flash by, and it probably should here, some of it in this area here. We'll just pop down to 200, and maybe you'll be able to see that. And there some of it was. So, it's massive. Back up the video a little bit. Here's some action from just an hour ago from uh, Lasco, and basically they put it up. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the idea that there is some wild action from way out in the space that comes up there. All right? This stuff just comes in from the middle of nowhere, which is totally wild. Okay? We'll back it up a little bit for you. And as you can see, the sun fights all this stuff off. As soon as this stuff flies in from way out in space, the sun just basically is way ahead of it because it has such a long out radar that it's ridiculous and it just blows that whatever the hell that was just to smithereens. So, now this ties into a lot of the truth I'll be able to tell you about the moon, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And yes, there's a way less expensive way to get to the moon. And yes, you're still going to need a rocket. 
but you don't need to go there on the expensive one to get halfway there.